What a great day to have some coffee and get into the Word. Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. It is well with my soul. You know, I really think we have the best mugs around. They're awesome. And of course, this month we're talking about fact checking. And that's what we've got in the mug, a little headbangers brew. That's a fact. And uh, it's uh, a whole bean ground decaf K-Cups, all of those things, and it is well with my soul. Also have these cool t-shirts. I know. My fact checker. So what does the Bible say about transgenderism? That's where we're going today. Dear Pastor Bob, what do you think of sex reassignment? Do you believe that there are men who are trapped in women's bodies? Do you believe it's important to choose your own personal pronouns? And what position should we as Christians take on this issue? Whew. Now, I have to admit that I got this question some time ago. I've been letting it sit. Now, I don't answer every question that I receive because I receive quite a few. I thought this one needs to be answered and and when I decide what to do each day, I uh, I kind of look through some of the questions. Sometimes there's something already on my heart. But I had something that happened yesterday that sparked this one. And I thought, I think I'm ready to answer this question. And I think I'm about to answer it correctly. I don't believe I would have before. Mm, I know. You know, it's amazing how we're always learning. And what position should we as Christians take on this issue? Well, here's where we want to be. It is well with my soul. It is well with me. It is well between me and God. What position should we take? Well, love, love, love is our position for everything. So yesterday I was sitting having some coffee and uh, I met a friend there. We were getting some work done. And and uh, I noticed this woman slash man walk in. And uh, a little clumsy, uh, dressed very butch. It was definitely a woman. Still had the shape of a woman. Still had the voice of a woman. Butch haircut, men's clothing. And... Uh, and immediately my heart went out to this person. I, I'm not sure why, it just did. It just happens sometimes. And and I kind of silently prayed for them and just kind of watched a little bit. And so <clears throat> we drank more and more and more coffee, which means I had to make a little trip to the restroom. And I went into the restroom and there's a, a stall and a urinal. And of course I used the urinal and right after I finished using the urinal, this person came out of the stall. And I, it was a little uncomfortable for me, I have to admit. Um, obviously still a woman transitioning to a man, identifying as a man, went into the men's restroom. And uh, immediately I just felt compassion more than anything said hello, and said, uh, I said I had to make room for some more coffee. <laughs> Just stupid little thing to say. She, he laughed, and, and, um, and then I washed my hands and went to, to, they have this thing that dispenses paper towels, and I went over to use it, and you're supposed to just put your hand in front of it, and they automatically come out, and it wasn't working. And uh, she just jumped right in and 
kind of took it apart and helped me and we talked as she was doing it and we kind of left and shared a moment and I said, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, and um, there was this connection that happened and I could tell she was nervous being in the men's restroom, but forcing herself to be there. And, uh, and it was my job to love her. And I knew that at that moment, it was my job to love her, not to condemn her, not to judge her, not to say, oh, you're sinful, because so am I. She sins differently than me. But it was my job to love her. And I felt all kinds of compassion for her. And I liked her. You know, I liked her. I enjoyed sharing that moment with her. And um, we connected. I don't mean on a male-female level, but I mean in a friendship level, on a humanity level, whatever it is. And uh, do I believe that there is that there are men who are trapped in women's bodies? Yes, until they're born. <laughs> you can say, I can say, I used to be a man trapped in a woman's body and then I was born. But I think that's the only case, honestly. Do I believe it's important to choose your own personal pronouns? No, I think God chose those things for us. We've gotten so confused on some of these issues. You know, the Bible is really clear. At the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and it, it says, so God created man in his own image. The image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So he said, this is in my image. I want to create you in an image that works, in an image that's godly, in an image that you can do so much with and express so much, but even more importantly, in an image that allows you to connect with each other and with me with great possibility. And he further defines men and women in the Bible. And, um, you know, there are so many examples of people who try to say, well, you know, but he just didn't talk about all the different pronouns that could be used and all the different kinds of people. No, he, he did. People use frogs, for instance. You know, the Bible definitely says that, you know, he created the 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 fish and the sea and then very distinctly he created the the animals that and the you know the, those things that crawl on the land and what about a frog who can live in the water and on the land both isn't that an exception no he talks about frogs other places but he doesn't ever talk about anything besides male and female is there more than that well according to God's universe and how he establishes himself throughout the whole Bible, no, there isn't. Now, I'm not saying that there are different persuasions. And I, I think there are so many different ways to think about this and so many different things to consider. And we're going to do a whole series on the LGB, I don't remember what all those letters are anymore. <laughs> they keep changing them. But we're going to do a, a series on that, and it, it'll be coming up. And we'll talk about it a little bit. But, but when we talk about transgender, when we talk about changing our sex, when we talk about changing the design that God gave us, I have some problems with that. Because I've seen so many people that are not happy once they transition. You would think they'd say, okay, I'm transitioned now. I feel so much better. And there might be people that'll tell you that suicide rate is pretty high with them. Of course, you'd say the suicide rate is maybe even higher with the people that haven't transitioned yet. I don't know. But I meet them a lot. You know, they eat with us under the bridge a lot. My mom is a magnet. You know, we've had so many transgender people 
that um, they just love her, that come and hug her and tell her their life stories and all of that. And she just loves them and, and hugs them back unconditionally and listens. And <clears throat> we've had some, well, some characters, male, female, and other, yeah. Do I believe that there are people trapped in the wrong body? To say that, I'd have to say, I believe that God made a mistake with some people and accidentally put them in the wrong place. And I don't believe that. I don't believe he makes mistakes. Do I believe there are people that feel like they're trapped? Absolutely. I feel like I'm trapped with some things as well. There are some struggles that I've had for all my life. And I think about it and I think, you know, did God make a mistake with me? Can I ever get through this? And even though it may not be a sexually oriented thing, there are so many other things. And because I struggle, I, I, I tend to think, okay, I need to make some kind of transition. I need to take this problem into my own hands. I need to, to begin to you know, to move from a place of struggle to a place of success. It's up to me to maybe reassign what God made a mistake with. No, he doesn't make a mistake. And I'm learning that the closer that I get to him, the more he shows me that, the more he shows me who I am from my innermost being. And in my innermost being, when I have the Holy Spirit working from those deepest parts, I begin to see things clearly. I begin to experience things differently. And I begin to have healing in those things that, that are a struggle. And sometimes the struggle lasts for a while. You know, Paul said he had a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what that was, but there's something he really dealt with. And he says, I've prayed and prayed and prayed that God would take this away. <clears throat> he says, but he doesn't. But he tells me that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. His power is made perfect in my weakness. And so Paul says, it's okay with me because my struggle always leads me to him and he takes care of me. And when I struggle again, I go to him and he takes care of me. Did he make a mistake? No. Am I sometimes predisposed to difficulties? Possibly. But his grace is sufficient for his power is made perfect in my weakness. You know, my heart goes out to this person that I met yesterday, and I really hope I see her again because um, I love her. God gave me compassion, and I would love to connect, and I would love one day for us to sit down and, and be able to say and earn the right to say, you know, maybe this is not something you have to do. She obviously wasn't very far along, obviously was still a woman, voice, everything else was still there. Just beginning to identify as another gender and going there, but eager to connect as well. So folks, I'm afraid that as we clumsily go through the world as Christians, that we take scriptures like this and beat people over the head with it. Well, you know, God says he only created men and women. So you're either a man or you're a woman. And if you're not, you're a sinner and walk away. Did God ever ask us to walk away? No. What did he ask us to do? Shake our finger? No. He asked us to love, love, love. Agape them. Love them unconditionally. Compassion for them. Your heart reaching out to their heart. Forget about everything else. There's a person in there. And seeing what God might do to transform their lives. Male, 
female or whatever feel people feel like they identify with, all of that disappears when love, love, love is the focus. Christ told us to love. He told us not to judge. He gave us a parameter to live with personally, but when he when he talks about how we are with other people, and of course there are codes of conduct and there are moral ethics, but basically, bottom line, my response to anyone who sins differently than we than I do, or even people that sin the same, is love, love, love first. That's the bridge that takes that huge gap and connects it. Love. Well, folks, don't forget you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.